let's just focus on making it do one thing really, really well, which is this distributed timestamp. Okay, it's a distributed database. It's a database that we all share, that we can all keep under our own purview, that we can all keep an eye on, such that we can trust that in those brief intervals at night where we need to go to sleep and we can't keep our eye on the network, that it's still going to work as we expect it to. So it's a tool, and like any tool, it works well when it helps people achieve their goals. And it's going to be related, it's going to, to integrate itself with existing social networks. Bitcoin did not uh, enter the, the world stage in a vacuum. It entered a world, I think, just the right time, like all great works of genius. It entered at the height of social media. It entered at the height of the social networks, the big, giant connected components like Facebook, okay, and Twitter. And uh, is Bebo even a thing anymore? I don't know. So. It exists in this framework where information is becoming ever more abundant. You've got larger and larger data sets. But the larger data gets, the more important context becomes. What Bitcoin fundamentally does is it, it kind of acts like gravity, right? It helps objects maintain their internal consistency under conditions of acceleration. Right? So if you, if you have, for example, a, a company or a project that you're working on and you've got various important documents that rely on agreements between people and rely on documentation of code or even the code itself, then time stamping it into the blockchain will help you restore the sequence in which those documents were produced in a way that cannot be broken. And also in a way that helps you understand part of the company structure without revealing the content of the rest. Okay, And that's important because that kind of, I mean, let's say I mean, one of my I'm a big fan of uh, someone called Ben Dornberg, okay, and he's one of these people, uh, I call him super cop, Ben the super cop. And he comes along and he has outed a, a number of sort of scammers now in, in the Bitcoin ecosystem by calling bullshit, by asking hard questions on behalf of the people that perhaps don't have the same kind of power that he has, right? the same kind of... Um, the same knowledge, the same rigor in his profession. And one of the great things about the Bitcoin is you've got no excuse anymore, right? You've got no excuse to be colluding behind closed doors without some kind of account. You've got this great thing called a distributed database. Why aren't you timestamping all of your agreements? Why aren't you notarizing all of your receipts? Okay, if you're running a charity, there's no excuse for you not to be photographing your receipts time stamping these entries into the blockchain and saying, hey, Ben, hold me accountable. Here's my hash table. Here are all the entries in the blockchain. It's infinitely traceable. Do you want to know what I was doing last May? Just ask me. I'll show you. It is block height 334,433. Merkle root begins 6753909. And that's it. That's a timestamp. You know, this, this media now contains information that it cannot have achieved, cannot possibly have existed without knowledge of an event that everyone has equal access to, or at least the majority of people. It reduces all of the problems that we thought were insurmountable. We've now got a roadmap for. These are no longer interesting problems. When we talk about how we share information fairly across space and time, how we reduce the latency, how we make sure that everyone has all the information they need to make good decisions in life, we have an answer. Oh, I see. It's just about reducing the cost of a laptop down to something like 20 bucks. Oh, I see. It's just about making sure that hard drives get shipped with the minimum capacity of two terabytes. Oh, I see. It's just about putting up ubiquity antennas, Wi-Fi antennas in, in, in regions that are otherwise left, left out of the global network. Oh, I see. And it provides an incentive for an ambitious entrepreneur to anticipate that demand and reduce the risk in an otherwise uncertain environment for those people. And I think people really do, you know, when, when people sort of say Africans don't need mobile phones, they need water, shelter, and all these kind of glib platitudes that you hear, privileged white people in air-conditioned offices come up with 
it, you've got to understand you're, what you're doing is you're undervaluing the importance of information. Whoever has information controls the beliefs in the system. And if you control the beliefs, you control the actions, the behaviors, the prices, all of the things that they do. And more importantly, you control what they don't do. You are able to stop them from behaving in ways that undermines your freedom.